Hey guys, welcome back to Sapper Steel Forge. If uh, everything looks the same, it's because I'm doing three videos in one day, or at least the intros. Uh, hey, it's so good. <laughs> Mainly because it's like an hour later. But it really is working. Uh, Frontier Knife's coming along beautifully. I've learned more about the collar thing, and I'll tell y'all more about it during the process. It, uh, really awesome. But, right now, we've moved on to the machete. Now, I, I know we did a, a video showing the rough forging of this thing. And so, I thought we'd, uh, you know, do some a little bit of discussing on how we're going to bring the weight down and how this is going to work. And, and again, why this shape? Because... Well, you know, machetes uh, were the one of the precursors to uh, cutlasses. But, I mean, you know, it's not an exact science. Uh, lots of uh, cultures came up with the same answer to the same question in, in a lot of different ways. You know, uh, the knives from all over the world look a little bit different. But then, you know, you get into functionality and you start seeing a lot of similarities. Uh tall wars and sabers of all different kinds for like cavalry have a basic concept going on of a large swooping curved blade meant for horseback slashing at things sure there's differences but that blade shape well every culture that had horseback cavalry seemed to have arrived at the same conclusion of what the best shape of blade for that sort of thing was and you know, after a while, you got to think, well, maybe, maybe they're right. So, in this particular case, we're, we're going back to a, a very simple, very basic shape of, you know, something like a cutlass. But, uh, like I guess this thing weighs just, uh, there's probably four or five pounds of metal here. Maybe, maybe not quite that, but it's very forward heavy. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the small grinder... Because the wheel's exposed, I, I've got to uh, modify that one, the bigger one, a little bit to uh, expose that wheel so I can get in there and hollow grind on it too. And uh, I'm just going to grind a fuller in uh, at least one, maybe two. We, we may end up having to do a second fuller, we'll see. Uh, they're going to be pretty deep. Uh, this this is a very thick blade, and and you want something with some thickness and or or width, because you know it, it's meant for chopping. It, it um, especially around these parts, we we don't have palm leaves and stuff like that that need to be chopped with a machete. What do we got? We got hard brush. The, this stuff, you know, these the, some of these. Uh, you know, I, I don't know trees and stuff, but there, there's trees in that area there that have got thorns that are easy to size my pinky finger, and they'll go through a, a leather work boot like it's nothing. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. They, you step on them right through your boot. Yeah, they're tough. You don't want to go after that with some little bitty, you know, razor thin sort of thing. You want something with some weight behind it. Not, not this much, obviously. But you want to be able to chop. Uh, if you're taking one tool into the woods, you better know it can do everything. So, you know, something this this size, uh, you know, harkens also to, like, uh, the pioneer sword, the, the French pioneer swords uh, of the early Americas, where they had a saw back, and they were meant to chop wood and cut wood and cut logs for forts and also fight. So that's what we're gonna do. We're, we're gonna build a very useful machete. It, it's gonna have plenty of weight to it. We're gonna make this handle really hold on to people. I'm thinking um, I got a slab of maple in, and uh, yeah, we might try some maple. Should look very pretty. I, I've not worked with the maple at all, just bought it. So that'll be pretty cool. But for now, we're gonna spend the next six or seven eternities or so it's going to feel like trying to grind a fuller into this thing and get some of this weight down. Let's get it started. So, uh, we're, 
we're back. Uh, you can see we're, we're still working on this fuller. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I've really liked this thing over the years. And uh, for a cheap little grinder, yes, it's the Harbor Freight one. Uh, it's been doing me great. You just got to be willing to uh, modify and do some crazy stuff now and again. But that's kind of the job. Uh, yeah, the uh, tensioner broke. I'm sure y'all have seen me putting a wood clamp on it to tension it before. And now, uh, let's see, I've gone in and trimmed back some of the uh, housing. That's because I couldn't get the blade any closer to get that fuller deeper. I just never run into that problem before now. But, uh, yeah, and since I was doing that one, I went ahead and did the big one. Just took the angle grinder, cut off some of the housing, trimmed off the excess so I wouldn't get burrs and, you know, spl metal splinters. And so, it's back to work. We're going to just keep right on going. So, uh, yeah, this fuller needs to be a good bit deeper. It's, it's going to be a, a pretty deep fuller. It, it's dang near going to meet in the middle. It, it's, you really really got to take some of this weight off here but uh, once we get the fullers in we'll start grinding out the uh hmm. seems like i got a chip missing but anyways we'll start grinding out the the, the sides and then uh, we'll do the bevels and yeah we're not going to get there today it, this is going to be a process It feels like a long time. Uh, an hour just grinding something. It takes it out of you. But, uh, yeah, so we got the fullers in. They, uh, they're mostly all right. I like to do the fullers before I ever grind and, and clean up the sides because then if I've got like little nicks and and where the, you know, it jumped off the wheel, it's, it's easy to clean it up. And, uh, like the you know the spine's a little wonky all that's going to clean up when it, when i clean up the sides and start doing the bevels and stuff so uh yeah we got some of the weight down it's still insanely heavy uh yeah um we're gonna have to do a pretty wide bevel just to get uh more of this weight down either that or a second fuller here. I'm thinking just the wide bevel. I think the wide bevel is the way to go. But we're going to clean up the sides and uh, go from there. I'm, I'm not going to subject y'all to all of that. You, you see how we did it. The, the important thing, I, I'll probably even cut a lot of that for you. The, uh, the important thing was uh, how we do the uh, putting in the fuller with the grinder and that's go right up against the wheel. And it's a skill. It, it sounds like it's easy if you watch all those guys on, uh, you know, that TV show. They make it look so easy. And it's it's a skill because it wants to jump. Yeah, that, the wheel will throw it off. And uh, it's difficult, especially if you're trying to do like a hollow grind on, on for your uh, edge. It is really easy for it to jump off that wheel all, constantly. So, uh yeah, you just got practice. That's it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to shut it down, uh, the videoing for today. I'm going to do a bit of a cleanup on this. And then I got some stuff to do this evening, so uh, we'll get back to this later. For anyone who finds this video, I've been grinding on this thing for the past 7,000 years. The sun has burned out and I am alone on this planet. Alright, a little bit dramatic, but it has been a bit. 
Oh, uh, so we finally got the uh, this thing uh, ground down. Oh wow, yeah, this took a bit. Uh, there was a lot of there, there was, this thing was a beast. But uh, it, what we needed was some nice flat grinds all the way to the fuller to really bring that weight down. And just and that's that handle is still warm. <laughs> Let me dunk it in the water. All right, so uh, yeah, last thing I'm gonna do is you can see I've started shaping the handle a little bit more now. Uh, got the beginning of a finger well here, and that's just gonna help lock that hand in because you you don't want your hand moving up and down this thing getting hot while you're swinging it. It still weighs, uh, but uh, yeah, it chop. Yeah, this thing was is gonna be made for chopping. So uh, we're gonna keep working on it. We're gonna shape the handle a little bit. I'm kind of thinking more towards, uh, actually, I just got some maple in. Uh, I went to a flea market, got a big slab for a really good price. And um, I haven't used it yet. And uh, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing what that looks like. I've got some walnut in. Uh, Y'all are gonna see that. Uh, soon I'm, I'm making a crochet hook and so we're using some of the walnut for that since I've never done one exactly like this I kind of want to do something I've never done before and uh, I, we'll see I, I don't know I've never done a uh, paracord wrap because I'm just not a fan of them but you know maybe we'll see I, I don't know yet anyways let me get back to work it is almost lunchtime and I got stuff to do this afternoon all right, so we got the handle shaped. It's a, it's a lot more comfortable in the hand. Uh, there's still a good bit of weight there, but it is meant to be a chopper, so it'll, it'll do it. And um, a little bit of clean up, a little more cleanup work to do on the, in the handle uh, tang area. But uh, yeah, so it's 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 shaped. Got a nice little finger weld, keep your hand from sliding up on it. Got a little bit of curve here to really hold into your hand. So, yeah, uh, most of the grinding done. It is finally, finally rough ground. So, uh, next step is heat treat, which is not going to be right now. It's lunchtime.